We all want fast devices, but RAM, CPU, and GPU are just lines on a spec sheet. What do they mean? That's where benchmarking comes in, but they can be gamed and even cheated. I'm Joe Levi with Pocket Now. Today we're going to go hands on with Game Bench, thwarting cheaters, taking names. With so many components inside our devices and complex interrelations between them, it's all but impossible for us to gauge how fast something is just by looking at its specifications. Additional cores may have an impact. How fast those cores are clocked play into the equation. What type of technology is inside those cores plays a huge role in how fast our devices are. Add to that the amount, type, and speed of RAM, and all the same considerations for the graphics processor, and you can see how the stack of variables keeps getting higher. Changing one spec can have unexpected consequences when the device is looked at on the whole. That's where benchmarking comes into play. In theory, benchmarking is a concept wherein you run several devices through the same set of tests. Since the tests themselves are the same, the devices are what are tested. The result is a score that should be comparable and tell just how fast one device is when compared to another device. The issue with benchmarks in general is that those tests are often weighted such that the score that you're interested in is factored lower than the score that someone else is interested in, and vice versa. And then there's the potential for cheating. Not long ago, we saw some manufacturers gaming the benchmarks. They artificially ramped up their speeds when they detected a benchmark was loading. This resulted in false highs. Another issue is the tests themselves, especially when comparing graphics processing. Benchmark apps often have to build their own graphics engines, which usually lag behind what real games and graphic apps can do, and the manner in which they do it. That's where GameBench comes into play. It's a new kind of benchmarking utility that approaches the problem from a completely different angle. Rather than running a series of tests that may or may not represent what you actually use your device for, GameBench lets you run your own apps. Testing is a bit unique. Rather than installing the app and pressing the go or start button and sitting back and watching as it runs through the tests, here you select which apps you want GameBench to monitor. When you fire off the test, you'll notice a little time with a stop sign placed on your screen. This is a visual indicator that lets you know that not only is GameBench monitoring the app, but it's also recording the session so you can analyze it later. You've got to run these tests yourself. That means playing the games. The app won't do it automatically for you. While that's a bit inconvenient, I mean, really, who actually likes playing games, right? It does provide you with some very interesting data, and brings a lot of firsts to the mobile benchmarking industry. GameBench is the first app to provide detailed performance and battery analysis across all Android devices. It's got the first usability benchmark in the market, and it even records frame rates and battery drain rates. You can also visually correlate on-screen events to frames per second. It's got some simple to understand ratings, game performance and battery analysis, reports on those frame rates that we mentioned earlier, and quick identification of bottlenecks inside the game, which can be especially useful for developers. And then for those of us who like to make presentations and put stuff in articles, it's even got graphs showing CPU usage, GPU usage, and battery drain rates. There are, however, some nuances to be aware of. Currently, devices powered by MediaTek processors aren't supported because many of them have not enabled SysTrace in the kernel options. We think that's probably something that MediaTek has done and we hope that they'll change. Getting the kind of data needed for deep digging benchmarks like this usually requires a rooted device. Although GameBench doesn't require you to root, it will make you go and enable USB debugging, connect to and run an app on your desktop computer, though you only have to do that once. If you like seeing this kind of video, please give it a thumbs up. Make sure you subscribe and share your friend. If you like seeing this kind of video, make sure you give it a thumbs up. And if you like Game Bench in particular, make sure you tell your friends about it on all your favorite social media networks. Subscribe to our channel so you don't miss out on what's coming in the future. And of course, make sure you're benchmarking your devices. For Pocket Now, showing off Game Bench, I'm Joe Levi. Thanks for watching.